This little secret between you and me. So and here them. I am on the Thrive Time Show Rumble Channel, the reawakening versus re reset. I was looking for a video to get a clip out of this morning, and I came across something that just kind of blew my mind. I've been making videos about Reawaken America and some of these characters since I started making videos and you know showing how much they're yoked up with the new age and blending it with Christianity and seeming like morphing into or part of the one world religion <clears throat> that's what I think but this morning look at this Lucifer Publishing Company what is the Lucius Trust? Why is Lucius Trust located next to the United Nations building? Who is Alice Bailey? Hello folks. Today we are visiting one of the main hubs of the Luciferian agenda in London. This is the home of the Lucius Trust and ironically is right next door to the United Nations. I'm sure many of you know that the Lucis Trust was originally named the Lucifer Publishing Company and there was good reason for that. The Lucis Trust was founded by the Theosophist Alice Bailey who wrote a 10 point plan for changing society in the direction of Luciferian principles and to destroy Christian values. As a disciple of Helena Blavatsky, Alice Bailey believed Lucifer to be the light bearer. They teach that Lucifer didn't fall due to sin, but actually made a sacrifice for our benefit in order to liberate us from a tyrannical God. This doctrine is so twisted and evil, as I'm sure you would agree. Now, remember in the book of Genesis, the serpent's deception, how he lured Adam and Eve into the knowledge of good and evil. He said mankind can become as God. This is exactly the same lie that we see being pushed in these theosophical New Age movements. And the reason that we're going in here today is so that you can get a clearer picture of the type of philosophies and doctrines that are indicative of this Luciferian movement. Star Hotel is like a palace, and um, this is where the Lucis Trust are based next to the United Nations. I love to comment. Let's see what I said. <clears throat> I said, This is really interesting considering Mike Fl Flynn is a theosophist and Reawaken America is totally yoked up with the New Agers like Sasha, Sasha Stone, who is a Christ hating Luciferian. Reawaken America is part of the Luciferian capital P plan Alice Bailey wrote about. That plan being the Luciferians take down the old world order and bring about the Luciferian new world order of love and light. And that is what the reawakening versus the great reset is all about. Dark to light. It's the false light though. I just couldn't believe it. So after looking around here and seeing all these clowns, I think I'm going to make a combination uh, compilation video from some of my other Reawaken America videos that I've done and maybe add a few new things that I haven't gone over before. That in Israel, he's like the king of the Jews. But while I was looking on here, what is up with that? I just found something very interesting. So that's what this video is about. Oh, look at this. 
Wow. Think and grow rich. Wow. Wow. Ready to enter the Thrive Time Show. We started from the bottom, now we here. We started from the bottom, and we'll show you how to get here. We started from the bottom, now we here. We started from the bottom, now we here. We started from the bottom, now we're on the top. Teaching you the systems to get what we got. Cutting Dixons on the hooks, I break down the books. Z's bringing some wisdom and the good looks. As the father of five, that's why I'm a dive. So if you see my wife and kids, please tell them hi. It's a C and Z up on your radio, and now three. Yes, yes, and yes. Thrive Nation, on today's show, I'm going to talk to you or, or, or teach you, walk you through uh, the author that I named my son after. I named my son after. I, I named my son Aubrey Napoleon Hill. Uh, Napoleon Hill being the best-selling author of Think and Grow Rich. And Napoleon Hill wrote uh, these self-help books that were designed to teach uh, people how to become successful. And because I was not successful when I started reading the books, they were very interesting to me at the time. Um, and they're very interesting to me now. And these principles aren't uh, super complicated. They're not impossible to replicate, but they really do make a massive difference in the lives of everybody that implements these these 17 principles. Now, you don't have to memorize these principles, but I would encourage you to, 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 to take notes as I go through these 17 principles. Okay, I'm going to read a, a quote I've read before. I'm actually in the book the externalization of the hierarchy by alice bailey of lucius trust that we saw at the beginning and uh because what clay clark is doing is helping to externalize the hierarchy and in case you're not familiar with what the hierarchy is because you know a few years ago i didn't know this is what the new age calls the hierarchy it is what a biblical christian calls the powers and the principalities and the rulers of darkness. Yes, that is their hierarchy. And the first step is to externalize their teachings, the mysteries. This, the next step is for them to literally externalize and materialize and be present here. That's what they say. And also I should mention, if you're wondering why I'm using this Shambhala song, it is because, according to Alice Bailey and other New Age or occultist, that is where the hierarchy hangs out, in Shambhala. It's like an esoteric, up in the mountains, in the astral plane, other, other place where the hierarchy is hanging out. And you can go there, you can astral project yourself there. Maybe that's where all these false prophets are going when they think they're seeing Jesus. I don't know. But anyway, that is why I use this song, because it's fitting. Okay, here's the quote. There is no question, therefore, that the work to be done in familiarizing the general public with the nature of the mysteries is of paramount importance at this time. Pause. That's what he's doing by explaining these principles from Napoleon Hill's book that he got from one of the masters of the great masters of wisdom or whatever which is exactly what alice bailey has done <clears throat> these mysteries will be restored to outer expression through the medium of the church and the masonic fraternity if those groups leave off being organizations with material purpose and become organized organisms with living objectives when the great one comes with his disciples and initiates we shall have, after a period of intensive work on the physical plane beginning around the year 1940, the restoration of the mysteries and their exoteric presentation as a consequence of the first initiation. Why can this be so? Because the Christ, as you know, is the hierophant of the first and second initiations, and he will if the preparatory work is faithfully and well done, administer the first initiation in the inner sanctuaries of those two bodies. Those two bodies meaning the church and the Masonic fraternity. Okay, so when Alice says the Great One or the Christ, she you know she's talking about 
the Antichrist. And she's saying if the preparatory work is faithfully done, he'll administer the first initiation in the inner sanctuary of those two bodies, which includes the church. And why should we listen to her? I don't know, but I'm seeing that happening. And her demon prophecies have been coming true. Okay? Because they are following the book of Revelation. They are trying to make it happen. They think they can beat God. They think they can beat Jesus. Many faithful work workers will, during his period of work on earth, take this first initiation, and some very few will take the second. The race has now reached a point where many souls are on the probationary path and need but the heightening of their vibration made possible by his presence to reach the portal of the path itself. Write down, you can just write down the, the principles that um, you believe in the most, or, or write down the principles that you could work on the most, maybe the principles that you uh, could, could improve upon. And so we're going to go through these 17 principles together, and I'm going to share with you a success story about a, a client that we've worked with who we've helped to grow dramatically. Uh, this particular success story, they've grown their business from uh, almost three times, I believe it's three times larger than it was when we first started working with them, and uh, then they've grown to 18 locations. 18 locations. So, uh, for their, their, their work. I'm reading an article from the Berean Call. This is called Nuggets from a Cult Invasion The Classic Case of Napoleon Hill by Dave Hunt. This is a portion of his book, A Cult Invasion. In chapter one, we briefly mentioned Napoleon Hill. He was not seeking contact with spirit beings when he was suddenly confronted in his study by an unexpected and an uninvited intruder. Hill claims that an emissary came across the astral plane in a voice that sounded like chimes of great music. This visitor from another dimension declared, I come from the great school's school of masters. I am one of the council of 33 who serve the great school and its initiates on the physical plane. Hill was informed that he had been under the guidance of the great school for years and had been chosen by them to give the formula of success, the supreme secret to the world, that anything the human mind can believe, the human mind can achieve. Here again is the same lie that turns one from God to the alleged power of the human mind. Peel and Schuller try to link this occult power with prayer and faith. Pause. Peel. Norman Vincent Peel. Trump's um, pastor. Unpause. Hill was not praying, but was introduced to a mysterious source of guidance claiming to inhabit a spiritual dimension, a region beyond the power of our five senses to know, from which unseen silent forces influence us constantly. Although he spoke and wrote a great deal about mind power and positive mental attitude, a phrase he was inspired by these entities to coin, Hill was con convinced that behind these forces were unseen watchers guiding the destiny of those who were willing to submit to their leadership. There was no limit to the success and wealth which these allegedly higher beings would give in exchange for following their principles. Hill claims to have gotten those, these secrets from contact with the great school of masters of which he wrote. Quote, sometimes known as the Venerable Brotherhood of Ancient India, it is the great central reservoir of religious, philosophical, moral, physical, spiritual, and psychical knowledge. Patiently, this school strives to lift mankind from spiritual infancy to maturity of soul and final illumination, unquote. It sounds like Alice Bailey. It also sounds like the manifest sons of God that are all about coming to maturity. Sorry. Still a perennial bestseller after, even after 60 years, 
Hill's best-known book, Think and Grow Rich, has been credited with changing the lives and influencing the careers of a large percentage of America's top business executives. Its 1941 edition contains endorsements from United States Presidents Theodore Roosevelt, Harding, Wilson, and Taft, and from some of the world's greatest scientists and founders of America's leading corporations, Thomas A. Edison, Luther Burbank, John D. Rockefeller, F. W. Woolworth, William Wrigley Jr., George Eastman of Eastman Kodak, Robert Dollar of Dollar Steamship Lines, and others. The Venerable Brotherhood of Ancient India taught Hill the power of visualization. Following their advice, Hill visualized nine famous men from the past sitting around a table as his advisors, and their advice proved to be remarkably sound and profitable for Hill to follow. As a result, Hill became very successful, and millions of other people, including many of America's leading business, professional, and political leaders, adopted and proved the astonishing power of this ancient shamanic technique in every area of their lives. Though he clung to the idea that it was all imagination, from what Hill wrote, it is clear that visualization had opened the door to the world of the occult. These nine men were... Emerson, Payne, Edison, Darwin, Lincoln, Burbank, Napoleon, Ford, and Carnegie. This is um, Napoleon Hill quote, I'm sorry. I held an imaginary council meeting with this group whom I called my invisible counselors. In these imaginary council meetings, I called on my cabinet members for the knowledge I wished each to contribute, addressing myself to each member. After some months of this nightly procedure, I was astonished by the discovery that these imaginary figures became apparently real. Each of these nine men developed individual characteristics, which surprised me. These meetings became so realistic that I became fearful of their consequences and discontinued them for several months. The experiences were so uncanny, I was afraid if I continued them, I would lose sight of the fact that that the meetings were purely experiences of my imagination. This is the first time I have had the courage to mention this, but I still regard my cabinet meetings as being purely imaginary, but they have led me into glorious paths of adventure, and I have been miraculously guided past scores of difficulties. I now go to my imaginary counselors with every difficult problem which confronts me and my clients. The results are often astonishing. <sighs> Carl Jung Carl Jung also tried to deny the reality of these entities that visited and guided him. Jung finally was forced to admit their objective reality. Shirley Hill could not really believe that his imagination gave each one of his nine counselors, nine counselors, individual characteristics characteristics which he confessed surprised him and whence the wisdom that proved so beneficial on so many occasions when problems beyond his ability to solve were presented to his imaginary advisors of course it is much more comfortable to believe in the power of imagination than to accept the fact that one has become the victim of an occult invasion and welcome to Elijah Streams. Today's Wednesday, August 23rd, 2023. This is Prophets and Patriots edition, and we're super excited to have him on with us today. Let's welcome my guest, Clay Clark. Clay, 
welcome to the show. You're a professional at this by now. Well, I thank you for allowing me to be here with you. And I want to, to clarify, uh, as of right now, we have seven tickets remaining for the Reawaken America tour. And some people watch me on social media and they'll go, "What do you, didn't you say you had 10 yesterday or four yesterday? Well, what happens is, is they do not, they, meaning uh, the, the uh, mainstream media, and certain city powers, I don't want to get sued on today's show, they don't want us to have the Reawaken America tour because they don't want right. uh, people to hear the prophetic word from Steve Schultz or Don A. Clement or Amanda Grace, and they don't want that group of people to connect with Don Jr. and Eric Trump and Cash Patel and Laura Trump. They want to have a godless Republican Party because they know if the prophets team up with the Christian politicians, that is a force to be reckoned with because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. Right, amen. So we have so much persecution. So this is what I went through. Every hotel, every venue, every facility withdrew their offer to host the Reawaken America Tour in Las Vegas, Nevada, because we are, quote unquote, a reputational risk. And so my wife and I prayed about it, uh, and we decided to build a six hundred thousand uh, dollar outdoor. It's like an it's an in, it's an enclosed air conditioned facility. Certain people and again, I don't want to be sued. Push back and said you can't do it unless you have eight. 40 ton air conditioning units. So Kelsey, that's enough to uh, to cool like a, a, a uh, Whole Foods or something. And then so we we did that. And then we were told, well, there's too much danger. The reawaken record is too controversial. Now you need to pro provide 24 seven security for the people installing the air conditioners. So I thought, well, we were going to have 3,000 people. Um, and since we now have $100,000 of extra expenses, let's go ahead and sell 6,000 tickets. And we let people name their price. Well, so then we had 6,000 tickets. Well, then we just found out today they want 18 18 40 ton air conditioning units now to be up to specification so now i decided to sell another few hundred tickets so that's what keeps happening and so i keep expanding the building so I, it, if you were dealing with me if you were the vendors who are dealing with me they just keep seeing me in, in, enlarging and enlarging and enlarging the facility uh, but we're going to be now in uh, las vegas nevada it looks as of right now we'll have 6300 people in the oh same my. building this will be the second largest event we've done. We were in Tampa. We had 8,500 people. And some people call it a revival. Some people call it a, a political event. I call it the reawakening because we're, we're bringing people back to God. And Steve yeah. is an absolute big part of it. And if you'll notice, I've tried to introduce a lot of my friends um, to the Elijah Streams program because my job is that of the organizer. And I'm kind of a connective tissue with these people. And I'm so thankful to say... Cash Patel, love being on your show. Laura Trump, love being on your program. Uh, Eric Trump, and, and it's a whole different audience for them. And I hope all your all your listeners know that these are real people that want to save the country. And I just yeah. appreciate everybody tuning in today. Yeah, that's awesome, Clay. And I know Steve is probably so excited to be with everyone. And it's kind of just like everyone is like a family when they're there. I've heard um, a couple other people say when they're there, it's like the speakers who come are just, they'll, they'll stay after and talk to people and pray for people. And it's really powerful. But I'm a creep That can keep you out of hell, and it's the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. 